I believe that the nut, the seed of reinventing yourself is changing how you think about yourself. You've been telling yourself a story about who you are and what you're capable of for years. Here's the question I want you to ask yourself. Is the story you've been telling yourself serving you? Hello, you are listening to the Late Bloomer Living Podcast, where we are reimagining and redefining what it means to be in midlife, where we are gathering energy, momentum, and excitement for our next chapter via candid conversations with other midlifers about their own pivots, pitfalls, and triumphs. I'm Yvonne Marchese, your host, and I'm so happy you're here. Hello, and happy new year, my friend. We are about to round the corner from the year 2022 to the year 2023. And hey, I have some good news for you. You made it. You survived all the challenges that came your way this year. And it's been another doozy, right? Ah, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. We've had inflation and oh, forget it. We all know the challenges we've been facing, right? And yet, here we are. We are still standing. We did it. I want you to know how grateful I am that you are on this wild ride with me. I also want to remind you that you are stronger than your greatest challenges. And the evidence is right in front of you. You are here. Seriously, you have lived through your worst days. And bonus, you have chosen to spend a little time taking care of yourself today. You have a magical device that can play podcasts and music and keep you connected to loved ones. And at this very moment, you made the time to listen to this podcast. I'm going to have to guess that you have tuned in here because you are thinking about what you want for your future, that you want more of the good stuff that life offers, and you feel like you're not done yet, that there's more for you to do. I've been doing a lot of thinking about what I wanted to say for this last podcast of the year, and in doing so, I went back to my older New Year podcast episodes for ideas. And when I listened to the New Year's episode for 2022, last year, it really hit home for me again. I knew I needed to hear it again, and I decided it was worth repeating for you again. Because it was a reminder to me that the journey to personal reinvention is a paradoxical process. (laughs) It really isn't about changing yourself. It's truly about changing how you think about yourself. So, today I am pressing the replay button on episode 79 from January of 2022. Come on back in time with me and let's reimagine our future. Give yourself 20 minutes to rethink what's possible as you age. I've been thinking a lot about how I wanted to kick off the podcast for this year, and I decided to go solo. Honestly, I always find solo episodes to be the most challenging. I don't consider myself to be much of a writer, and I have struggles collecting and corralling my thoughts, but Here's the thing, it's a new year, and even though I know that the way we mark the passing of time, it's all all made up, I still feel the need to do something special. (laughs) I'm doing air quotes right now, special. Yeah, I still feel the need, as you might, to reflect on the past and look forward to the future. I guess this is where the traditional New Year's resolution comes in. I'm not making a New Year's resolution, and I haven't set goals for the new year. 
not not really. I mean, I have things I want to do in the coming year. But but I haven't set it up as a resolution, if you, if you know what I mean. I mean, and I've been thinking about these goals for some time. Anyway, somehow I, I can't let this time go by without a lot of self-reflection. Uh, a lot of belly button navel gazing, if you will. And a lot of curiosity about where I'm going from here. I mean, that's really the whole point of this podcast, after all. Not not just about where I'm going from here, but also where you're going from here. So if you've been to my website at latebloomerliving.com, the first thing you see there is that what we're doing here is exploring midlife and what it means to step into new challenges through candid conversations with people who have busted through their midlife doldrums by stepping into the unknown. And then on my podcast page, I I ask a few questions. Uh, The first one being, are you middle-aged with dreams of writing a book, changing your career, or finally taking on that passion project and you're worried it's too late? So that's what's on my website. And, and the reason I'm referring back to that, I guess, is because I, I'm thinking about why I started this podcast in the first place. And am I still on target? Is it still where I'm going? And, and yeah, the answer is yes. And you know you're in the right place here with me if you are simply feeling somehow stuck and uncomfortable or if you're already on the quest for reinvention and you may already know what you want, you're just not maybe taking the action to get there. So here's the thing. Not everyone wants to reinvent themselves in midlife. I get it. It sounds overwhelming and exhausting to some people. And I'm not going to lie. Reinventing yourself takes work. It is exhausting, but it is also exhilarating. And I want to be clear about something It's not about changing yourself. Let me clarify. I can't remember where I heard this, but when I heard it for the first time, I thought, aha, that's it. Here it is. This is the thing I heard. It's not about changing yourself. It's about changing how you think about yourself. I'm going to say it again. And and I want you to really let this sink in. It's not about changing yourself. It's about changing how you think about yourself. I believe that the nut, the seed of reinventing yourself is changing how you think about yourself. You've been telling yourself a story about who you are and what you're capable of for years. Here's the question I want you to ask yourself. Is the story you've been telling yourself serving you? Are you even aware of the story you've been telling yourself? Are you aware that it's just a story and that it's not the truth? It it only seems true because you've been telling yourself the same thing over and over for years and training your brain to find evidence to support your story. That's how the brain works. Okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to get all scientific on you. Bear with me. There's a small part of our brain called the reticular activating system. That's a, a bundle of nerves about the size of your little pinky finger. And it's little, but it has a huge impact on how you see the world. It's often compared to a nightclub bouncer, which I love, because its job is to filter out unimportant information so your brain can focus on what's important to keep you safe. Your brain really wants to keep you safe. Isn't that great? The thing is, your senses are constantly feeding so much information to your brain that if you didn't have a filter like the reticular activating system, let's call it the RAS, you'd be completely overwhelmed. But here's a great question for you to consider. How does the RAS, 
know what information is important? Well, some of this is instinctual and and really tied to keeping you safe, like noticing a loud horn honking at you to warn you not to step out into traffic. Uh, If you were to hear a horn honking from further away, you'd probably ignore it because it isn't close enough to matter to your personal well-being. I mean, have you ever noticed that you can tune out conversations around you that don't have anything to do with you? When I was in college, I used to study late at night in a diner. And the hum of activity around me was not distracting to me because I could filter it out. Unless someone walked in who knew me and said my name to get my attention. Then my Raz would perk up to poke at me and say, hey, this is important. Someone's talking to you. Someone used my name. That's important. Here's another example. I had a boyfriend in high school who drove a little green Honda. And I think it was a Honda. (laughs) Anyway, after meeting him, I would see that same car all over town. But it wasn't his car. There were lots of these little green Hondas driving around town. But now I was noticing them because they looked just like my boyfriend's car. I hadn't ever noticed them before, but they were there. When we decide that something is important, we tell our RAS, our reticular activating system, isn't that fancy? Anyway, when we decide that something's important, we tell our RAS to watch out for that thing. And the RAS also looks for evidence that validates your beliefs. If you think that you are, let's see, bad at managing your time, that's one of mine, you probably will be. If you believe you're good at making money, you probably are. The RAS will filter information for you to prove you right. That's confirmation bias. You've probably heard that term before, and I think we all fall prey to it when we hear the news and filter for the information that confirms our ideological beliefs. But it also affects our ideas about ourselves and what we're capable of. Um, Here's an example about how confirmation bias can show up in our lives that I found in an article in Psychology Today. I'll I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Um, It says, a person with low self-esteem is highly sensitive to being ignored by other people, and they constantly monitor for signs that people might not like them. Thus, if you're worried that someone is annoyed with you, you're biased towards all the negative information about how that person acts towards you. And you interpret neutral behavior as indicative of something negative. So that was from that article. And, and here's the question I find myself asking. Can you change your filter? Can you change the way you think about yourself? I think so. It starts with becoming aware of what you're thinking. Um, meditation and journaling can help with this. Slowing down to notice your thoughts. I often tell the story about how I tried to give up complaining for Lent one year. When I tried to do that, oh my goodness, it really made me aware, first of all, of how much I was complaining. And then I started to notice the thoughts that would keep rotating, the the ones that kept coming up. And I noticed that I was always complaining about being tired. And when I complained to myself that I was tired, I felt more tired my RAS was finding evidence for how tired I felt. When you become aware of your thoughts, when you notice what's on repeat, looping around and around again in your brain, you can then ask yourself if that repeating thought is actually true and consider the possibility that it isn't necessarily true. The next question you can ask yourself is, Is this thought helping me or serving me? I'm going to go out on a limb and suggest that if the thoughts you have on repeat make you feel bad about yourself, then they are not serving you. The question is, how do you stop thinking them if they aren't serving you? That's tricky, right? Well, here's something else to bake your noodle. Have you ever heard the phrase, what you resist persists? Huh. What you resist persists. I remember hearing this for the first time and, and, and I heard it over and over. 
And for a long time, it just couldn't make any sense of it. I mean, what the heck does that mean? How does that even work? Well, now that I know about the, the reticular activating system, I can see that when I focus on something that I don't want, I'm telling my brain that it's important. And then it stays firmly in place in my thoughts. And I'll keep finding the evidence that proves my confirmation bias. What you resist persists. Bing! <laughs> so how the hell do we let go of those pesky thoughts that don't serve us? We have to ignore them. That's right. Ignore them. Um, it's kind of like, you know, psychologists say if you want to teach your kids good behavior, you actually want to ignore their bad behavior. You know, a toddler is doing something and they're, they're doing it to test you. You ignore it, but then they do something you like and, and you, you praise them. And that teaches them the behavior that, that you want. Anyway, but if you ignore it, th then what? Our brains have to think something, right? Well, that's where we get to be creative. Not only do you need to ignore those thoughts, but you need to replace them with affirmations and visualization. Oh, so, okay, so now before you turn this off saying, oh boy, you've really gone around the bend, Yvonne, hear me out. <laughs> I'm not talking about random, overly positive, sticky sweet affirmations. That's toxic positivity. Your brain will not accept falsely positive thinking. You've been telling it other things for years. It's, it's not like you can just flip a switch and suddenly think positive. You have to find thoughts to think that make you feel good and that you can actually believe. And this is where the work comes in. You need to make time for yourself to find what works for you. I have a couple of suggestions based on what's worked for me, and I just want to say this. I'm still working on this. I still struggle. This is not an immediate fix. It's an ongoing project. What I've been doing that I'm convinced helped me get through the madness and sadness of all the upheaval in 2020 and this past year is my morning routine. For me, getting up in the morning to meditate and exercise every day has been life-changing. Meditating doesn't have to be sitting with your legs crossed humming a mantra. It can be a walk in nature or doing a yoga routine. Um, the main thing is when I wake up in the morning, I don't look at my phone right away. I don't turn on the news like I used to or check my email. I get up before my kids and my husband so I can have some quiet time to myself before the rest of the world places its demands on me. It's the time when I check in with myself. I go through some affirmations that really feel true to me. I take time to think about what I'm grateful for. When I'm exercising, I tell myself I'm getting stronger every day. That's an affirmation. I'm thankful for what my body can do. That's an affirmation. And I, I can believe that, you know? If I'm not feeling particularly great in my body, like maybe a cold's coming on, I tell myself, my body is working miracles. And you know what? I believe that. I know that when I'm fighting a cold, the cells in my body are going to work to fight an infection. And I think that's miraculous that our bodies are designed to fight disease like that. So that's an affirmation that I believe that makes sense to me. I take time in the morning to think about what I want my day to look like. If I'm really on point, I write it down. You know, when we write stuff down, we can help our brains prioritize what to focus on. When we focus on something, when we believe in something, it affects our actions. And taking action is where we begin to make change. That's when we start to get results. Okay. So in a nutshell, I suppose, those are my thoughts on reinventing ourselves. I'm going to repeat it. It's not about changing yourself. It's about changing how you think about yourself. You are already amazing. You are already 
powerful beyond your imagination. If you set your intentions every day, you will be amazed at what starts to happen. You will start to find evidence for your shiny new thoughts, which will reinforce them and give you energy and motivation to take new action, to try something different, to try something new. I've mentioned it before, but I have a workbook called Five Steps to Your Midlife Reboot that has exercises you can use to get started on this journey. If you're interested in signing up to receive the workbook, I'll have a link for you in the show notes along with some articles I found about the RAS and confirmation bias uh, and even a TED talk um, that I found that was pretty cool after I wrote this. One last thing. Do you remember when you were a kid and you would try a new thing that you were interested in? And, you know, maybe you weren't so good at it right away, but it was so fun. You kept trying. Do you remember how excited you were to do that thing? And do you remember feeling butterflies in your stomach? Do you remember how much energy you felt? That's what I'm talking about. Go forth and find that energy this year, my friend. (laughs) And let me know how it goes. Let me know if you have questions or have a breakthrough. Really, send me an email. I would love to hear from you. So I'll be back next week with another conversation for you. In the meantime, have a great week. Happy New Year. Stay safe and well. Talk soon.